everyone and welcome back before we begin here today please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics so in today's video we're going to be covering structural analysis and we are going to be finding some reactions for some statically determinate bean members so <clears throat> this will be our eighth part in this particular series and we have this member here shown on the left in the description stating that we have to determine the reactions in the horizontal and vertical directions for the pin at a and c and point b is a hinge so <clears throat> Anytime you have a hinge occurring within your object, um, you always try to find the reactions as much as you can before splitting the member at the hinge. Sometimes you can find something, sometimes you can't. Well, in this case, we really can't find anything <clears throat> simply because, well, we have a pin here, which means we have a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction, CY and CX. And then up here at A, we would also have the same thing. We would have an AY, and then we would also have a horizontal reaction, A sub X. So we have four unknowns here, two in each direction. Can't really solve for anything directly right now. So that means we are gonna to have to split this thing at the hinge and form a left side section and a right side section. and. Just putting on your unknowns, your unknown reactions, just assume a direction um, at the beginning. If you get the direction correct, that means that your calculations in the end will produce positive numbers. If you get a negative number as your answer for that reaction, it just means you assume the wrong direction. So just go ahead and assume a direction. Doesn't really matter if you get it right or wrong, you'll get a positive or negative answer depending on which way you assumed. All right, so what I'm gonna work with is I'm gonna work with the right side first. So I'm gonna work from B to C. So utilizing my three equilibrium equations, summing forces in the X, summing forces in the Y, and then summing moments about a point, I can find some information here. Well, whenever you break your member at the hinge, you have to keep in mind that your hinge acts like a pin reaction on that segment that you just split up. So if we redraw a free body diagram here for my right section, I will have the 15 kilonewtons per meter here. And then here at point B, I am going to have a horizontal and a vertical reaction by b sub x, which let me assume b sub x in this direction. And we would also still have our unknowns that we have from the main assumptions of cy and cx occurring on this right segment. The hinge here at this location at B does not transfer any moment from left to right across the hinge. It can only transfer translational forces. It allows for rotation. Think of like a door frame. The door frame at the hinges allows the door to rotate, but your door does not move left, right, up, or down. It just swings around the hinge, and that's the way this is um, acting here along this beam member. So this would be my free body diagram for my right section. So now what I can do is I can sum moments about B and then I can get C sub Y here. So let's go ahead and let's work on that. So summing moments taking counterclockwise is positive about B still has to be everything in equilibrium equal to zero. So I would have my 15 kilonewtons per meter times the distance it runs, which is six meters. And since it's a uniform load, I need to get its centroid to that point at B, which would just be half the distance, which is three meters. This is rotating clockwise about point B, so it will be minus. And then I will have C sub Y rotating counterclockwise, so it is positive times its total perpendicular distance to B, which is six meters. And that's all I would have with a moment about B since B sub X, B sub Y, and C sub X go directly through B. So with this, I can get C sub Y here which C sub Y pops out to be 45 kilonewtons of force, and it popped out to be a positive answer here, so it means that my original arrow direction that I assumed of upward is the correct direction for C sub Y. Okay, now, looking at what we have here, I have C sub Y is equal to 45 kilonewtons on that free body diagram, and up here on the main body, I have this as 45 kilonewtons as well in the upward direction. Now. Looking at my right side segment here, can I sum forces in the x direction and find any? No, not really, because I have c sub x and b sub x. Too many unknowns. Well, what about the y? Yes, I can sum forces in the y direction and I can get b sub y, because remember, b sub y will translate over to the left side segment over here as well. So let's sum forces in the y direction and we can get b sub y here using this right side segment. So summing forces in the vertical direction, I will have by plus the 45 kilonewtons from C sub y, and then subtracting off the 15 kilonewtons per meter, 
times the six meter force there for the entire distributive load. And B sub Y will pop out to be 45 kilonewtons. Positive answer, so that means my assumed direction on the right side segment of up was correct. But that's not a reaction. That's just telling you how much is being transferred in the vertical direction across the hinge from the right segment to the left segment. Okay. So there's nothing really else I can determine with my right side segment here. So anytime you get to a point where you can't determine any other reactions or any other portions or the hinge forces, just go to the other side of your cut line. So we've been working with the right side over here. Well, let's work with the left side over here from A to B and see if we can find anything. So utilizing my left side segment here, I have A and I have B. So I have it assumed that AY is upward and A sub X is to the left here. Well, B at this point, I have on the right side, I have B sub Y pointed upward and B sub X to the left. Well, when you go across the hinge from the left segment to the right segment and vice versa, these arrow directions are going to flip. It's going to be like looking in a mirror, same magnitude, opposite direction. So instead of it being up, now it is down on this side. And instead of B sub X being assumed to the left, it will actually be to the right on this side. Once again, same magnitude, flip the arrow directions like looking in a mirror. Okay, so can I find anything here? Well, yeah, I can find A sub Y. So I can find a sub y just by summing forces in the vertical direction equal to zero. I will have a sub y going upward, subtracting off my b sub y, which is 45 kilonewtons. I don't have any other force acting on this uh, member from a to b in the vertical direction. So a sub y is just simply 45 kips or 45 kilonewtons, sorry, in the upward direction. Okay, so really the only thing left that I need to find is I need to find my horizontal forces here and my horizontal reactions. Well, if we look at our member here, we're not really given any length whatsoever. We're not given anything in the height or the width of A to B, but we are given this angle here. So what we can do is that we can draw a force diagram and correlate A sub X, A sub Y, B sub X, and B sub Y here. So looking at point A, what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have A sub X. I'm going to have A sub Y, which we have found to be 45 kilonewtons. And if we complete the force triangle, this would be the total reaction at A. Well, this is 45 degrees off the horizontal, which was given in the main picture. So we can use this right triangle here and we can correlate the 45 degrees with the 45 kilonewtons of A sub Y with our horizontal A sub X. So essentially what we have here is tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 45 kilonewtons over A sub X, the opposite over the adjacent. So A sub X, when you rearrange here, is just 45 kilonewtons divided by the tangent of 45. Well, 45 degrees just means that those angles, those forces are going to be exactly the same in the horizontal and vertical components. So this means that I will have 45 kilonewtons as A sub X and the horizontal direction going to the left. Alrighty. <clears throat> so now that I have A sub X utilizing that slope of member AB, what I can do is I can fill everything in here. Well, this is 45 kilonewtons. This is 45 kilonewtons. We have this is 45 kilonewtons. Well, we can use the main body here and we can sum forces in the X direction. Because what do we have in the X direction here? We only have two things. We have the reaction A sub X and the reaction C sub X. Because when we put this back together, B sub X and B sub Y will cancel with each other at the hinge. So if you were to sum forces in the horizontal direction for the entire member here, you would have, well, C sub X would have to be equal and opposite to A sub X. Since A sub X is going to the left here, 45 kilonewtons, well, C sub X has to be going to the right here at 45 kilonewtons. So pretty much all your answers are, or all your reactions are going to be 45 kilonewtons. C just has it going up and to the right at its pin. And A has it going up and to the left at its pin. And those would be your final answers. So you would have C sub Y is 45 kilonewtons up. 
a sub i is 45 kilonewtons up, a sub x has 45 kilonewtons to the right, and c sub x would have to cancel with a sub x in the whole body picture, so it'd be 45 kilonewtons to the right. Now, those would be your final answers, and it's always good to double check and make sure that those reactions make sense. Do they make sense with their general directions? Well, we have 15 kilonewtons per meter pushing this beam system downward. So the reactions here at C sub Y and C A sub Y would have to be going in the opposite direction of upward to cancel with that. Okay, that makes sense. Well, what about my horizontal forces here, or, or horizontal reactions here? Well, as this thing pushes downward, it will try to drag A, B inward, and it would have to drag C inward as well as trying to pull those two ends inward towards the center. Well, these reactions are going to have to react to that and go in the opposite direction as that force. So yes, their directions do make sense. So there are a couple ways you can always check these values is that you can just sum moments at a different direction and make sure, or a different point, make sure they all cancel, or just look at the overall picture and make sure that it makes sense which way those arrows are pointed. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problem solve this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out greatly. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.